My name's Amata and in this Red Gaming Tech video I am here with something from Samsung. As they have said today that they have begun mass production of the DDR4 memory chips that use its second gen 10nm fabrication process. And you might ask, well, what's so new and spangly about it? Well, it does numerous things including shrinking the die size of new DRAM chips and improves performance as well as energy efficiency to things that you definitely want for any part of your rig, especially, of course, memory. You might say, okay, that's great, but how does it do that? You know, get to the nitty gritty, get to the, you know, the nerdy stuff. And well, it uses new circuit designs featuring air spacers, which is actually a first for DRAM, and also has integrated circuits that can operate at 3600 megabits per second per pin data rate at standard DDR4 malt, uh, voltages, not multages. <laughs> you don't want your RAM molting in your case, that would be a bit inconvenient. And these have been validated with all the major manufacturers over at CPU Town. Samsung usually like to do things in twos, however, and they've got a couple of things with DRAM to follow this theme. And the first of which is actually regarding the new chip, and the second is regarding the 10nm fabrication process that I mentioned earlier, which Samsung actually calls 1YNM because they just like to be all fancy, I suppose. But let's begin things with the DDR4 IC itself, shall we? So, as I said, Samsung's pet name, as it were, for this brand new DDR4 chip was made using the 1YNM fabrication process, which rolls off the tongue a lot less smoothly than 10nm, I must say and does have a 80 gigabit capacity and supports 300, so not 300, 3600, excuse me, MT's second data transfer rate at 1.2 volts. Now, okay, that's all great, but what does that actually mean in terms of like, hey, is this better than the RAM I currently have? Is it better than the top competitor? And it actually runs 12.5% faster than its next direct predecessor, which is known as the Samsung C die and they're also claiming it to be 15% more energy efficient alongside that. Now obviously as graphics cards in particular become more and more power hungry, this is pretty important to just, you know, save that little bit of power here and there. Obviously some GPUs are surprisingly light on the wattage requirements and some are like this great big monolith that just sucks up all the power in the universe. So saving a little bit of power on things such as this is definitely useful. However, according to Samsung, these brand new DDR4 chips feature a quote approximate 30% productivity gain when compared to similar chips, but to be honest, I can't answer the question you're probably wondering, which is, okay, but what do they actually mean by productivity gain? They don't really say it could literally mean anything, but it's probably referring to the function of DRAM bit output per wafer and wafer cycle time, but it could also feature into other stuff like energy consumption, blah, 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 blah. But again, since they haven't actually said what that means, it's kind of based upon what you think it means, what it's likely to mean, what, rather than what Samsung actually means. So, you know, take this with a pinch of salt, basically. The really important thing, you know, the, the sort of nitty gritty, the most important thing of the announcement from Samsung is that the new tech is allowing Samsung to shrink die size and fit more DRAM dies on a single 300mm wafer and does result in lower per die costs at the same yield. But obviously that doesn't mean costs will be reduced by 30%, obviously. But it will increase DRAM output, which is definitely going to be good given the issues we've had with DRAM prices raising due to productivity issues and so forth. So, obviously, this is obviously not going to have a knock-on effect like now. It's not going to... Oh, yeah, DRAM prices are suddenly not a kidney anymore. But it is going to help in the long run. Now, the last thing before we move on from the chip is... Well, Samsung are claiming that all this new spangly stuff is going to be showing itself in numerous types of memory. DDR5, HBM3, and, of course, GDDR6. It's not going to be anytime soon, of course, but we could see these being produced in the foreseeable future using this brand new process. 
Now, I did say earlier that Samsung tends to do thing in, things in twos, and the second thing is also to do with the sort of relief of production issues with DRAM. As I have said, that they're going to be ramping up production of memory, not only DDR4, but also mobile DRAM and various other types of memory, and it's going to use both of its 10NM class fabrication processes to, quote, meet growing demand for DRAM in premium electronic systems worldwide. So, again, this ties into what I said earlier about DRAM prices and the pro productivity, you know, of that and the price of that is felt everywhere because, yeah, it's not just in your PC, it's in your console, it's in your phone, it's literally everywhere so the prices of it the, the prices of ram has a knock-on effect on pretty much any electronics to be honest not, not literally any but you know most of the stuff that we're going to be talking about here on this channel and most of the stuff that you guys actually care about makes use of ram in some respect so obviously samsung aren't the only player in the game but they are definitely a big player in the game and if they you know big ramp up production it will have a knock-on effect, and of course, if other companies do so as well, we could see those prices finally start to ease off a little, because it does seem a bit, if you want some RAM, you know, prepared to cough up and maybe chop your arm off and uh, try to bring your little brother back from the uh, nether realm. But uh, regardless, that is me done for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.